Sorry. So sorry. I'm so sorry. Welcome back to my 119 Hardcore World. Last episode we built this animal barn and a cow cooker. I do need to cook some cows. Mmm, dinner. Today we're gonna imprison, I mean employ, over 30 villagers to become OP. I want mending, unbreaking three, and all the trades that provide emeralds and hard to get resources like quartz, lapis, and most importantly enderpearls. I also have this chest right here, but I'll tell you what that's for later. I did a little bit of scouting and we're gonna build the trading hall right here. So I need to do some terraforming, but while I do, let me explain the plan. If you remember last episode, we went to the nether and found two blaze spawners. So we have blaze powder, but without the enderpearls, we can't go find the stronghold. I would normally just head into the nether and do some trading, but we spawn in a fortress, remember? I have no idea what biome we're even in or what my real nether looks like yet. We're also accumulating quite a bit of iron from our episode one iron farm, and I'd like to start trading that for emeralds so I can buy more important things. All right, let me start laying out the villagers and where they'll go. Each of the dirt blocks will represent a villager. I'm gonna have four villagers facing four villagers on each of four wings, so that's 32 total. I'm also gonna have a few empty slots in the back later for any expansion I need or things I forget. I already have silk touch so we could get stone to build with early, but I don't have any other librarians. I want mending. My gear is pretty good now, but it's starting to wear out as you can see. I also know that infinity bows, while great, do break. So I want at least villagers for power five, unbreaking three, flame, punch, and of course, infinity. I know I could set up a system where we can zombify these villagers easily and I can get trades for nearly nothing, but remember, I'm not even on day 200, so I don't have a lot of gold, golden apples, or even weakness potions. I'd rather just set up a good system for now and get their ankles bitten later. Now I can start to lay out which job blocks will go in which sections. I'm gonna have all the librarians together in the front of the hall and you can see that there will be 16 total. Other than the trades I mentioned, I'd love to have access to efficiency five, fortune three, thorns three, and a bunch of other trades that come in handy sometimes. Now I just dig holes that are three deep. If you don't know this villager trading hall design, it's by enx 4 and the link will be in the description. It's so simple, it actually makes me wonder if I'm playing the same game as Ian, but I've thought that a lot before, so yeah. The access to the villagers is actually below ground, so I need to clear out this whole section in between all of the workstations. Now I can move workstations to the bottom of each hole and just cover them with a trap door. This will make changing the villager trades very easy before I lock them in. I don't know why I've never done it this way. Thanks, Ian. I only have like three or four villagers total, so I'm gonna need to breed them like crazy. I don't want them to escape, so it's time to build the- oh. What did he say? No, 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 not that. Make a fence around the whole thing. That's what I meant. Uh, anyways, okay, let's move some villagers into the fenced area. The first will be our silk touch librarian and that's an interesting way to go over when there's a gap in the fence right there, but anyway, he went straight into a hole. That's the trick to this trading hall. Villagers will attach themselves to one of the workstations. They can only claim it by going on top of the trap door, and when they do, boom, they're trapped in a 2D pole. We can just cover him up and move on. The second villager I have is this Fletcher. You may remember him from such things as, I'm glad he has no idea how much bamboo I have. We can just lure him in with his own workstation and then lock the door behind him. Next up, we have this cleric. I actually forgot I had this guy. Come along then. I don't want him to jump into a hole yet as I need to breed him, so let's catch him quickly and I can row, row, row my boat down onto the beds. Knowing I only had a couple villagers, I actually threw in a bunch of beds and food with these last two, so there's four or five in here now. We can move them in. And these are the last two here. That one did not want to breed and became a librarian immediately. Everyone else is inside so I can break the boats. I've made the walls at least too high all the way around so nobody can get out. Yeah, I've been saving up some carrots for this. You can have some, and here's some for you too. I can hear the sweet sounds of food being shared. And yes, they spawned an iron golem. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna hit a villager later and I will have no idea where the golem is. With everyone moved in and fed, they just need to breed. And breed they did. Our population grew and so I added more beds and then it grew again. At night, I can easily count them. We currently have 11 that are not yet in workstation cells. That's a start. Now if the golem would just stop waking them up. So many hearts, so much love. This is going great. What? Okay, not great. I have too many down there now, let's move some up. I started moving some into cells and sometimes you can get two in one like this, but it's easy enough to fix, you just, why did that happen again while I was explaining it? It's pretty rare. Seriously? Okay, well, we'll fix you two. Get out. See, easy. Okay, it should be working again. And I should shut up. Let's move more out. I see all of your love hearts, but please quit wasting my food. I know you're trying. Mr. Gollum, I wrote you a letter. It says, Dear Gollum, I'm not your biggest fan. Love rad. From here, it's just trap villager, trap villager, and uh-oh, I made a mistake. Some of the workstations don't have trap doors. That's why two were falling in one hole. I had to let everyone out. 
It's very painful seeing them trying to breed and knowing there's about 10 too many down there. Yeah, I knew that wasn't gonna work. <sighs> All right, time to walk more into holes. That is a lot of librarians. Pick a hole, guys, any hole. There you go. Yeah, they keep wasting my food. It's fine. Here, have some more carrots. Anywho, with some villagers locked in their cells now, I can start to try trading for emeralds. And I'm gonna need a lot for these librarians. I'm also gonna lock in easy trades like clerics. I like being able to trade for lapis and redstone. That helps a lot. Their key trade is ender pearls, so you just have to get lucky as you upgrade. Now we just cross our fingers. And we did get the ender pearl trade. That definitely helps us. Yeah, I'm sick of coming up here for carrots. Let's just get a lot. This wasn't very smart of me in hindsight. You see, these two guys that rushed right in on the lower right-hand corner, I thought they were the Iron Golem. He was pretty close by though, so I kind of got lucky. If he had been about two steps closer, that was the end of the series. Well, that was enough for me. I removed this bridge, let the Golem pass, and put it back. Now he's trapped. What a sucker. Everything after that was pretty smooth sailing. I'd just get the villagers up here, let them fall in a hole, and then I could block them in. I also learned a fun party trick. Throw food in the hole, they walk straight in. Now it's time to clean up this mess and move our last few villagers back into this house so we can breed more if we need to. And they're gonna basically walk themselves straight over, which is no problem at all, barely an inconvenience. Oh, hi. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Oh, look, I was right. This is how we're looking. Villagers have claimed all the available workstations and I can start trading with them anytime I like. The first villager I wanted to level up is the Weaponsmith. After just one upgrade, he can trade for iron and I have plenty of that. The same goes for the Toolsmith, the Weaponsmith, and the Armorer. And with lots of emeralds now, I can also afford to level up more clerics. Eventually, I will have to move on to the librarians. They're just a bit more work. I have to break the lectern, replace it, check the trade, and do this over and over, checking all the trades until they give me what I want. I will, however, take this infinity for five. Let's lock that in. When you lock in trades, it's helpful to know what the minimum prices can be so you know whether to keep it. For level one trades like infinity or mending, the cheapest you can possibly get them is five emeralds. For each level of enchantment after that, the minimum goes up by three. So something like punch two has an eight emerald minimum, Fortune 3 is 11, Feather Falling 4 can be as low as 14, and Power 5 could go down to 17. Once you know that, making choices is far easier. For instance, Mending for 12 is an okay price, but I know I can get better, so I didn't take it. Not five minutes later, his neighbor gave me Mending for 10, and I took that. Actually, lots of that. I took enough that the price actually dropped to 8, and I took even more. And then that dropped the price to 6, and you guessed that, I took more. I really wanted these Mending books before my gear was any more damaged. You can see that basically all of my tools are suffering in some way. I don't really want Fire Aspect, but I will keep this sword for now. Now I just need to put Mending on everything else. Finally. I could just repair all of my gear now. A few swings my sword will do it. If I'm tired of any part of the world at the moment, it's this jump into the water. I won't normally trade rotten flesh, but hey, I just came from the mob farm, so this was actually a freebie. Free emeralds, plus some levels, and a working anvil back at home? That'll let me add mending to the hoe, shield, and boots. I can't wait to get rid of this ladder. It's so slow and repetitive when I need to get to the mob farm and back. I just want to get all my gunpowder from the mob farm, but it's up the ladder, jump off the farm, hit the water, and it's drop off the gunpowder from my inventory, and then it's back up the ladder, collect the gunpowder, and yep, jump back off the farm. If you can't tell, I was considering my options with throwing pearls now that I have basically unlimited, but it's drop off the gunpowder, back up the ladder, jump off the farm. I need to do something else. Let's go make some emeralds. I know I've procrastinated the librarians, but locking in 16 isn't a quick and easy job. I'm gonna cut out most of the boring rolls and only show you the keepers. Isn't this a moral dilemma? I locked in Punch 2 for 16, knowing I'd probably only need one book before I could zombify the villagers. The very next guy gave me Punch 2 for 8. Long term, that's way better, so I locked that in too. This is a problem. Sorry, so sorry. If you're paying close enough attention, you'll realize I actually did it again too, with Unbreaking 3. I'm so sorry. Yep, I'm climbing the ladder again. Can you feel my pain? It makes me want to jump off a- oh, right. 
Have you guessed what's in the box yet? So with our trades locked in, this is where I'm at. The build I have in mind to cover this trading hall is a bit of a Roman inspired meeting hall. I'll probably turn the upper floor into a breeder later, but today we're going to focus on the outer building. I do feel way behind on chores after days and days of playing with villagers, so let's quickly catch up. I didn't want to show this part as it's a minor spoiler for later, but I kind of have to given that happened. That's how we got Spooky Scary Skeleton. For the base of this build, I really want a heavy stone wall surrounding it with stairs leading in about here. The land in the village all looks the same, it's kind of boring, and a bit of a heavy base would suit this area pretty well and separate it. I also want the floor to end up over the villagers' heads so we can go up one more. Also, I'm not saying my mineshaft is in the way, but my mineshaft is in the way. I played around with a few ideas but settled on this design. I think the chiseled pillars will look nice, and adding those fences adds some contrast without being overwhelming. I may move the entrance to my mineshaft completely later, but for now, I just need to turn it out of the way. It's really annoying here. Okay, let's build this wall up. I'm going to use a mix of blocks from gravel to tuff, stone and cobblestone and andesite. The way that I want to protect the villagers is to remove the trapdoors but put upper slabs above them. This will give them plenty of space and nothing can get to them. With the main floor in place, this is how the trading hall area looks in the village area now. I do think that we're going to need to head back up to the stony peaks for more calcite. I think calcite inside the spruce pillars will look perfect for this build. I do have a bit of a secret weapon this time. The last time I was up here I didn't have efficiency 5. Resource gathering will go very quickly this time. I know I haven't unveiled the secret of the chest in my house yet. Have you made a guess as to what you think's in there? Put it in the comments. We'll get to that shortly. If you're new to my content, you'll need to learn that building doesn't come naturally or quickly for me. So often I'll have to try something, back off and look at it, maybe go in and try something else. This is just part of my process as I hopefully get better at building. I do like it with the calcite inset more than flush against the spruce wall. All right, now that we know what this is gonna look like, let's just get it built. I think that stone retaining wall looks great with this build. I've now built the main floor, added the spruce columns I was talking about, built the inside walls up with calcite, added a bit of detail with the stairs and the trap doors, and then connected the top with crossbeams. I also moved this staircase down inside because I hated that it was right in front of the door. 
Onto the roof. I'm continuing that Roman theme with a clear story gabled roof. I'll add windows to it later, but for now I'm going to put in solid walls for the verticals. In Roman architecture, many great halls were lit with clear stories, and I do want to open this up as soon as I can. I have these windows at the end to provide extra light for now. In a more classical Roman build, I'd bring the roof line together in one solid triangle, but I don't think an exact replica is necessary or even fits with my existing builds. So I'm just going to outline this with deep slate, fill it with spruce, and then it'll tie it into the rest of the builds that I've done up to this point. At this point, I'm just finishing up some detailing along the roof line. Then I'm going to add more stairs in between the pillars to tie the whole look together. Here, kitty kitty. Uh, okay, we have a cat now. It's spawned in the trading hall, so I'll give it a name. I'll pick from the best ones in the comments. Leave yours below. No more distractions. Let's finish with the campfires above the trap doors for a bit more detail on this roof line. I'm really liking this. I can do a little bit more with it, but I'm just going to add banners out front, I think, for now. This time I'm climbing the ladder for a good reason. I want to see the meeting hall build from above. Yeah, I think that fits in pretty well with the builds that I've been doing already. I'm pretty proud of this world so far. I've never had this much build in such a short time in a world. The one thing I do still need to work on is this trading hall design. It looks kind of ugly with the stone and the dirt, and this isn't really my vibe. Let's replace these with spruce logs, and I'll put a stair above the middle of each one. Spruce planks for a floor will tie it all together, and then a barrel at each villager's feet will help me organize trade materials, emeralds, etc. Yeah, it's already looking way nicer. Let me build up so we can take a clean look at this. I think this fits our world really well. As more of a farm builder and adventurer, these builds really challenge what I know how to do. Okay, time to reveal the surprise. And here's what's inside the chest. During the filming of this episode, I've been slowly gathering all the materials we need to go to the end, fight the dragon, and earn wings. Next episode, there is no resource gathering, no messing around, no sidetracking. We're going to head straight to the stronghold and kill us a dragon. I'm climbing to the mob farm exactly zero more times. I'll see you then. Goodbye!